So what's going on guys, I am Lenu and today we are going to see how to destroy objects in Godot. This way we are giving some interaction so the environment can react to the actions of the player. This can really help to bring some life and immersion to the game. There are a few ways to do this. I personally prefer to use Blender since it's free. We will take a model and clean it a bit and create a broken version of that model. Then we will export this to Godot and do some coding to blow this thing up. But sometimes this can be problematic because calculating all these objects colliding and flying around can really affect the performance of the game. So I will show you some tricks to really improve the performance and being able to destroy millions of objects at the same time with no problems. All right, let's get into this. Okay, for this tutorial, I am going to use this amazing Halloween pumpkin created by Camps C and this is completely free, but also you can use any 3D model you want. Let's download this model. And I want to download this as a GLB file. And we also need to do some modifications to this model. So let's go to Blender. Okay, so here we are in Blender. Let's go ahead and delete all this. We don't need this. So let's press A, X delete and now let's go ahead and drag our pumpkin model into blender and what happened oh okay this thing is huge uh let's see what we have here so we have this and this and all of this we only need the the object so let's delete this and this and let's name this uh, pumpkin. Okay, so now let's select the, the pumpkin. Press R to rotate the object in the X axis minus 90 degrees. Cool. Uh, now I want to resize this, so let's press N. And I want to set a scale of 0 0.005, I guess. This is better. Okay, this is much better. Finally, let's go to objects and apply all transformations just to make sure that everything is okay with the scale. Now let's do some changes to the model itself. So for example, as you can see here, we have some small, tiny details. And this is not good for the breakable things, this can cause some problems. So let's delete this. I will go to the edit mode by pressing tab. And I will select all these by pressing L, 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 and now X, delete vertices. Oh, also let's delete this thing over here. Now let's go back to the normal mode by pressing tab and we can also see how it looks with the material. So in order to do that, we can go over here and select the material option. And I don't like this, so I will do some changes to the inner part of the pumpkin. So I will go ahead to the materials option and create a new material. Let's name it inner material I want this material to be black and to have an emission color yellow with a strength of 3 now we need to apply this new material so I will go back to the edit mode and using L I will select all these faces and assign this material. 
okay this is much better uh, we have also another problem as you can see this mesh is like broken this can cause some problems later on so we need to fix this it needs to be one single object in order to fix this I will select everything by pressing A and now I will press space and look for merge merge by distance now we have a single object okay so now that we are sure that this model is clean and optimized we can finally break it which is uh, ironic but yes uh, we can break it because now it's optimized uh, in order to do that i will go to edit mode to preferences and i will install a special plugin so let's go to extensions and look for cell fracture so here we have this plugin and we need to install this i already have install this plugin but you will need to to click is install over here in order to use it so okay once we have done that we can finally select the model and press space and look for cell fracture and here we can configure all the settings on how we want this model to break um, I will just change two things I will get a noise of 0 0.1 and I want this to be broken into around 22 pieces and let's click OK excellent uh, let's go back to the model mode and as you can see we have the original 3D model over here and here we have a copy but this copy is composed by multiple parts so I will go ahead and export all these pieces I will select all the pieces except the original model and I will go ahead and export this as a GLTF I want to export only the selected objects and let's name this pumpkin pieces okay now I will do the same so I will delete or hide all this stuff and I will export my original pumpkin so let's do the same let's go and export this as an gltf make sure to export only the selected objects and let's name this pumpkin uh, simple okay so we are back in Godot let's import these models let's see here we have our models and a bunch of duplicated textures we only really need one texture because both models are using the same texture but I will keep this for now uh, so let's go ahead and right click on the pumpkin pieces and create a new inherited scene okay here we have all the pieces but as you can see these are yellow market this means we cannot modify or edit the pieces and we don't want that this is not good so I will click here once again and click open anyway and now we can modify all the pieces I will save this scene save scene as uh, let's name it pumpkin pieces modifier okay so here's the thing we need all these pieces to have physics and collisions so we need to go ahead 
and create a rigid body 3D. And I will drag this thing up around here. And I will put this piece inside the rigid body 3D and click in the in this piece and create collision shape and select single convex create so now this piece already have physics and collision let's do the same i will need to do this for all the pieces so once again i will go ahead create a rigid body 3d move this this thing up uh, put the piece inside and create collision shape and I will do this for all the 25 pieces a few minutes later okay uh, finally I give an, a rigid body and a collision to all the pieces that took some time but hopefully now everything should work Let's test this. So I will create a new empty scene. Uh, let's create a new scene. This will be the testing map. And we need uh, a floor. So let's create a mesh, plain mesh, with a size of 30 by 30. And we also need a collision for the floor. So let's create a static body 3D and let's put a collision shape let's select a box shape with a size of 30 by 30 and let's move this thing down over here also, I will put the mesh inside the static body 3D. And what else? Oh, we also need a camera. So let's go ahead and create a camera. Also, let's add some lights. I will add this default sun light and environment light. And finally, let's put our Pumpkin pieces modify it. Okay, let's see what happened. I will play this scene. There you go. We have this pumpkin breaking up, but it's not that interesting. Let's play this once again. As you can see, it looks too weak. So maybe we can add some impulse force to make this thing explode. I will go back to the pumpkin pieces to make these things blow up I will add some impulse so I need to create a very simple script and I will name this model breaker so when the game starts I want to go for the one by one through all these pieces and I want to apply an impulse to these pieces but in order for this impulse to work we need to define a force vector and a position so the force will be the direction of these mesh pieces multiplied by an intensity value and the force will start in the global position of this object oh we are getting an error because we need to declare the intensity value Cool, this should work, but 
I also want these pieces to be destroyed after five seconds. So let's await five seconds. And then destroy Q3 this. So there you go. Very simple. We just add an impulse to all these pieces and destroy this whole thing after five seconds. Okay, so that's basically it. Let's see how it looks. Let's play. Okay, that's much, much better. And as you can see now, after five seconds, all the pieces disappear, which is really good to save some performance. And we can also go to the pumpkin. And because we have created an intensity value, here we can set a value to increase the intensity of the explosion. Maybe we can put a value of 15 and let's see what happened. Okay, that's much more more intense. Uh, I will leave this at A for now. Okay, let's talk a bit about performance. So if I go to over here and enable view information, you can see right now we are having 60 objects in the scene and 60 draw calls and this is because this pumpkin has like 25 pieces and each of these pieces has two materials. So it's around 60 draw calls, which is a lot. Uh, also, if we go to the... over here to the perspective and display overdraw, you can see how we are having all these objects over here, which of course it's not good for performance. So imagine if, if we're having like a city or a town with a lot of breakable stuff, with a lot of pieces. So instead of having like, for example, 60 objects in a scene, we end up having like thousands and thousands of small pieces, which can be a performance killer. So in order to fix this, we are going to use a secret technique. If you remember previously, we have this pumpkin simple model. Let's go ahead and create a new inherited scene. And as you can see, this is just a simple model. And here we have two objects, which is very good, much better than having 60 objects. So the thing is, we are going to use this default clean model as a default and then we are going to replace this model with a breakable object when it's needed so when a projectile hits this or a character hits the pumpkin we are going to replace this for the breakable object to save some performance so let's do this i will save this scene uh, i will name it Pumpkin simple modifier. And let's create a new script. I will name it model shifter. We need to use the broken pumpkin model that we will replace for this model. So I will create a new variable to store that broken model as a packet scene. And when the player press a button, if the player press the enter button, I want to instantiate the broken pumpkin model. Also, I can store this thing in a variable, which will be the broken model 
instantiated. So now I can get parent and add this new broken model instance as a child of the scene. Also, just in case, I will copy this position and rotation at the scale, the transform of this old simple model to the broken model. And finally, we don't need to use this simple pumpkin model anymore. So I will delete this Q3, this old model. Okay, that's it. I hope it's not complicated. We are just replacing pumpkins. We are taking the broken model. So when the player press a button, instantiate the broken model into this position and destroy the old simple model. Let's go back to the editor. So by default, we will use this simple pumpkin and we will assign the broken model to the script over here. Let's go back to the testing map and I will delete the broken pumpkin. Instead of that, let's use the pumpkin simple modifier. And as you can see, we only have like five objects to render, five rockles, which is perfect. This is definitely much better than have a lot of pieces for each object. Now let's play the scene and see what happened. Okay, so here we have the simple pumpkin. And as soon as I hit space, it replaced the pumpkin with the fracture pumpkin. Okay, everything seems to be working perfectly. But how can we make sure that we are actually using the simple model? and we are not having like a lot of models in the scene. In order to check that, I will go to the debugger in monitors and I will check the FPS, resources and nodes. And let's go ahead and play the scene once again. Okay, so as you can see, we are having a total of 60 FPS, 10 nodes in the scene, and around 119 resources. Resources are actually some data that are preloaded in the background memory. In this case, we are having a broken pumpkin with a lot of pieces, so that's a lot of data loaded in memory waiting to be used. And this is very important to take in mind, because even if all these objects are not loaded yet or being drawn in the scene, they are still taking some background memory. And if you fill all of this background memory, you can have some problems. So be careful, resources are very powerful, but with a great power comes a great responsibility. Now I will hit Enter and let's see what happened. We're having 105 objects in the scene and now we're having just 8 because all the pieces disappear after 5 seconds. But also we, we have a very small spiky of FPS. We have one FPS drop which is decent and all the resources are empty. So we are only have eight resources, which are the eight nodes in the scene. This is interesting, but let's take this into another level. I will go ahead and duplicate this so I can have a lot of pumpkins. Okay, let's hit play and see what happened. Um, okay, we are having 60 FPS. We have a total of 48 
nodes in the scene, but we are having 119 resources. This is because even if we are having a lot of pumpkins, all these pumpkins are sharing the same reference data. They all share the same one broken pumpkin reference. Okay, let's hit enter and see what happened. Okay, as you can see, we have a lot of nodes in the scene, around 2,000 nodes in the scene. But our FPS really drops to 2 FPS, which is really bad. And once again, because all the nodes have been destroyed, now we are freeing up all the nodes and all the resources. So now the question is, how can we avoid this huge FPS drop? I mean, this happens because Godot needs to calculate all the physics, all the collisions for all of these million pieces flying around at the same time. And unfortunately, the Godot physics engine is not good enough. It's not optimized to do all of these calculations at the same time. But don't worry, there is a simple solution to this. We will use a different physics engine. In this case, I will use Jolt Physics. It is really powerful and has been used in games like Horizon Forbidden West and some VR games as well. There are many ways to integrate Jolt Physics into Godot. Uh, you can download it from internet, but in this case, I will go to the asset library and look for Jolt. So here we have the Godot Jolt physics. I will download this. And install. So now we need to save and restart the project. Okay, now let's go to project, project settings. Show advanced settings. And let's go down to the physics menu in 3D to change the physics default engine for the Jolt physics engine. And it says we need to restart the dog once again. So let's go ahead and reload this project. Okay, now everything should be installed. Let's play the game. We are now having around 60 FPS. I will hit enter. This is amazing. No FPS drop. All the thanks to these optimization techniques and the power of Jolt Physics. So that's it guys. Finally, in case you wonder, I have used this same technique for destroying stuff with the sword. The only difference is that I have used a collision to detect when the sword hits the model instead of pressing a button, but it's basically the same method we used in this video. So that's it for this tutorial guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This project and many others are available on my patrons page. In case you are interested, there is a link below. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.